What's up, Casey? How are you? What's up, man? I'm doing good, guys. You know, just uh, on the camp grind and uh, waiting till that uh, lovely day of March 6th. Yep. You got Dominic Cruz ahead of you at UFC 259, March 6th. It's shaping up to be, excuse me, a tremendous card. We got Israel Adesanya trying to be a champ champ. Blahovic with his first title defense. The GOAT in women's MMA. She's on the way. She's uh, defending her title. So I, I love, I absolutely love this card. But I wanted to ask you, yesterday or the day before, I look on MMA Junkie and it says Chandler versus Hooker. And I'm like, oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And then it says January 23rd. I'm like, cool. Like literally in a couple weeks. I wanted to ask you. Do you like it when it works that way, or do you like the anticipation of building, doing the camp, and waiting to March 6th? What's what's that like for you? You know, that's something that I think I uh, evolved in my game, really, like the, the, la the during Fight Island. You know, that the Alatang one was my first real test where I had, like, 14 weeks of camp, you know, training, the whole build-up, the everything. So that was a good test for me, but... You know me, I'm I'm always training, I'm ready. I, I like to fight on a couple weeks notice, but you know, as you work your way up the ranks, you know, you're going to have longer camps, you're going to have a little bit of anticipation, a little build up. So, uh, I'm just trying to enjoy the process and you know, I really think I figured out the the long term, you know, uh, camp against uh, Alatang and my performance spoke for itself and you know, I peaked at the right time and you know, I'm uh learning, growing and uh you know, I think I'm going to be a handful come March 6th. We're two months away, but we've known about this fight for about a month. So it'll be probably a three-month camp. Along the way, do you take little mini breaks where you – not necessarily like Sunday's day off, but like, hey, I'm unplugging for 72 hours, coach, just to like really, really decompress the mind and, and physically? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think that's where I would in, – in longer camps before, you know, I would start off – you know, as soon as I get the fight, I get uh, real crazy with camp start, uh, you know, pushing it really hard. And that's what I did last time is I just kind of eased into it. You know, six, eight weeks out, I really turned it up a notch. And, uh, you know, I felt the best I'd, I'd ever felt. And, uh, yeah, I've already told my coach, like, hey, uh, I was good on New Year's, but I'm, I might have to have one little break there uh, before we fight Dominic. You know, keep keep the mind right. I hear you there. All right, so let me ask you this question. Dominic Cruz is a guy we've covered every ever since the WEC days. And so I've seen a lot of guys prepare for him. But one thing that's been pretty similar, and I'm talking about Benavidez training for Cruz and Dillashaw training for Cruz. Heck, even Faber. Remember, it's been Cruz versus Team Alpha Male for like a decade. Right. And they developed an actual Dominic Cruz. And TJ Dillashaw was the known Dominic Cruz for a lot of the guys. But when Dominic needed someone – I think Joseph, I heard, could mimic him a little bit. Have you gone so far as to get somebody to mimic Don Cruz, Dom Cruz because he's so unorthodox? You know, I haven't uh, sought out anybody, you know, specific that's not been a part of my camp or part of my training yet. But uh, the guys are giving me some of the looks uh, like Dominic's going to give, you know, a little bit different movement. Um, you know, when you're training for somebody like that, like no, no one I grab is going to be Dominic Cruz. You know, uh, he, he's his own special footwork, his own special uh, style. And we can have guys kind of mimic him to, you know, make it give me that look a little bit. But really, I'm going to focus on keeping everything that I do sharp, keeping everything that I do well and, you know, go out and implement that game plan against him just like I do everybody else. <clears throat> um, I'm a high level fighter. You know, my fight IQ is good. My eyes are good, so as long as my, you know, my skill, my uh, my cardio, all that stuff is sharp, you know, I think come fight night, it's going to be the same thing as any other fight, you know. Um, it'd be stupid not to see a couple looks like him, but again, you know, nobody's going to exactly mimic Dominic, Dominic Cruz. Casey, anytime you can get a win over a former champion, it's a little notch on the belt, and not just that, they say that possibly movements and rankings can can go a little quicker. Do you feel like a win over Dominic Cruz maybe propels you a little bit more than anyone else? I think so. You know, he's a big fight. He's, like you said, one of the considered, a lot of people consider the Bantamweight GOAT. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, his last fight was for the title. So I think I beat Dominic Cruz. You know, I put him away in uh, devastating fashion. I think that, you know, 
puts me right up there, top 10, top five uh, competition. There are a lot of old school boxers that used to say they would consume themselves with everything that their opponents would say in interviews. And, and now in our social media era, I mean, you can practically see what somebody's doing every day. Right. When you listen to Dominic Cruz commentate, is there anything in his commentating that you can even pick even a little bit? Like, ah, I see he likes this or that that could ever help you in a fight. Is there anything that he says that would that would give you any type of advantage? Well, I remember him commentating my debut and he had a couple words that uh, I didn't care for. So I think that will be a little bit extra motivation uh, for this fight. So <clears throat> I know what, while listening to him commentate, you know, hearing him talk, he's a, he's a smart fighter. He's an educated fighter. And I, I think that's something that um, people underestimate with me. You know, they see me come out brawl, love to fight, happy. But my fight IQ is high and uh, you know, that's something Dominic has been known for. But, uh, you know, I'd like to challenge that. I, I may even have a better fight IQ than him. And, um, you know, listening to his, listening to him commentate, uh, you know, I see kind of the way he sees things, but he has a very broad mind. So nothing that I'm probably going to take, you know, into the actual fight. But uh, maybe a little motivation from my debut, talking a little shit about my wrestling. So that that's what the comments were. It was about yeah, wrestling. yeah. You know, it's a, you know, they like to hear themselves talk on the commentary. So it's cool. It's all fair. <laughs> Uh, but you know, uh, I remember that. I'll remember that all at camp. Do you feel like with this fight being as big as it is, do the effects go all throughout your camp, your family? Do people treat you a little better? Like normally I ask Casey to drive me to the airport, but I'm going to leave that cat alone for this camp. Uh, you know, uh, people try to, you know, they have, that's just being a good person and trying to help me out. But for me, I just kind of like to live my normal life. You know, if it gets too far away from my normal life, something's wrong. You know, if I'm not having fun, if I'm, if it feels like work, which, you know, this is one of the greatest jobs in the world to me. So, if, you know, if it's, uh, if it's feeling like work, if it's feeling tedious, uh, you know, I try to sit back, have some fun. And, you know, just over the years, I'm, I'm doing my best having fun, living my normal life and, you know, like I said, I step it up as far as the training goes, but, um, you know, maybe cut back on the party and not smoke so much weed. But uh, other than that, I'm living my normal life, even in camp. And, um, you know, I, I, I would like for people to just kind of do the same thing. But naturally, you know, they're going to they're going to uh, want to cater to me a little bit, just being a big fight. But, you know, I just want to be me. I just wanted to ask you a couple quick ones here. How bad was his criticism of your wrestling? Like, did he go so far as to say it sucked or it's average? Or do you, because you said it bothered you a little. So, no, nah, you know, it was just, uh, he mentioned that a uh, couple things I was still green in, you know, and I think it was just, I was debuting in the UFC, but it's like, man, I know exactly what I'm doing there. You know, I got 13 pro fights, and it was just a couple quick comments about me being green against my cage wrestling. And, you know, uh, I did get taken down in that fight. So, uh, props to him, but just uh, comments that will always stick with me. Is there anything to do with you train in Arizona? He's from Arizona. Was there any connecting of the dots just with that comment, or you think he was just being professional and giving his honest assessment? Yeah, he was just being professional and giving his honest assessment. But uh, you know, and it, it probably wasn't. Uh, you know, I was getting taken down by Borg in that uh, against the cage, but you know, kind of way, the way he put it, it, it put me in a. Gave me a little bad uh, taste in my mouth, so I'll have to give that back to him. The weed. I believe as long as you're clean eight hours before, eight hours after, USADA rules are very flexible when it comes to weed. But mm -hmm. I think heavy users of weed, and I'm not saying you are, um, but you brought it up and it seems like you enjoy it. So mm -hmm. when do you taper off on weed, uh, you know, like before the fight? You know – Normally, like a week or two hours when I'll quit completely, but as far as closer to camp, you know, I'll start to slow down a little bit. You know, I smoke weed pretty much every day. Uh, I'm a good medical marijuana user, and uh, you know, uh, it's part of my life, and uh, it's been been just fine for the last 10 years. So, uh, I do, you know, cut it off when I have a fight and when I get close to the fight, but other than that, you know, I'm living my life. 
for real medical, like, like like anxiety or something that's actually been you know diagnosed or whatever, or just medical to get it. Yeah, I got my medical marijuana card. Okay, because now it seems <laughs> the laws are still so out. I don't even do that anymore, right? But it's more for you know like uh, pain, sleep, that type of thing. Gotcha. So. Okay. Um, but if they were to invent, let's say, an M and M that cured all that, you'd still do weed, right? Oh yeah, I like the smoke. Okay. I like the yeah, high, of course. You know that's yeah, that's you, anybody. Have fun. <laughs> I got you. All right. Um, I wanted to ask you. Let's see here. I had I had something else. Damn. Oh, you almost answered it, and that's the funny thing. But I wanted goes to ask me a question, and then I wanted you to tell me how you felt about my answer. Except I'm Dom Cruz. You ready, Casey? Yeah. All right, hit me, goes. All right, I know exactly where you're going, George. And so Dominic Cruz was able to motivate you with his comments and his criticism of you. George, why don't you give him criticism? That way we could see if it motivates him. What do you criticize him about, George? Well, well, I thought I was Dominic Cruz. Oh, you want to play like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Dominic Cruz. Just ask me a question about Casey Kenny, and, <laughs> and then I'll play your game, goes. Like, ah, okay, okay. All right. uh, Dominic, what do you think of uh, Casey Kenny's wrestling now? It seems like he's proven that he can hang in that department. He's definitely improved. The guy's winning. I got to give him that. But there's levels to this. I'm a former champion. I've, I've been in there with top name, top guys. He has it. So will he be able to rise to the occasion? I doubt it. There's there's level to this, and I, levels to this. I still don't think he's he's at my level. So now, Casey, I want to know because you're going to hear stuff from that. He's going to be asked questions, and he's very very thorough and methodical. But I think I play that card of the experienced guy. Probably stop short of saying I am the goat. You know. But what do you say to that? Because in a way, there's some validity in the fact that he's obviously faced top, top, a tougher competition. But how do you respond to the fact that you know you're ready for a guy like Dom Cruz? Dominic, I'm going to show you exactly what level I'm on. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, you may have fought the top tier in the UFC, but I, I trained some of the best. I've been training my whole life for this moment. So March 6th, I'll show you exactly what, what, what level I'm on. All right, cool. He's gonna be ready. I, I can't wait for this. Now, goes put me on the spot. He wanted me to to uh, critique you as a me member of the media. I don't have that because you recall that time we tried to interview you in the airport. One of the things I told you was, "Dude, I made some money off you." Right. <laughs> uh, I, I think there was one fight that that I get got checked on, but I think I'm four and one with you. So I've actually he's asking for criticism. And I would say that everything just needs to be polished up a little bit more. But I'm in love with your cardio. Mm -hmm. You're relentless. Uh, I don't think the wrestling's bad, honestly. I think it's great wrestling for MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, but you you uh, you blend. You know, you blend your striking and your grappling very, very well. So I would say everything else just, it, it, you know, I guess to get to the level of being a world champ, mm -hmm. just don't get hit as much as some of the guys I see that get hit. Uh -huh. uh, stay relentless, you know. But but I, I think you're I think you're you're just gonna get better, man. I, like I say, I, I think um, people are fighting on their back heels when they're fighting you, and that's that's an important thing. Yep. Now you gotta you gotta uh, dedicate that win to George because he motivated you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. You know, uh, shoot, I may have to go down or go out there and take Dominic down over and over again, and ask him how that wrestling is. But. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. you. I appreciate that, man. I, I really appreciate the, the good words. And, uh, you know, you pretty much nailed it, you know. Uh, definitely definitely not done with this. I'm evolving, getting better every day. But uh, I feel like I'm in a place, and I feel like I have a team behind me to uh, take out the best in the world. So here we go. Your, sure. punch, your punches keep getting straighter, so that's, that's really, really good. And like I say, um, yeah. what I meant about blending is it, it can be a surprise attack. I think people were counting on – um, maybe getting taken down, and then when, right. they, when they're when they think that's coming, now there's been some very nice strike striking. Right. Well. Exactly, and uh, you know I had my first couple fights, and you know everyone talks about my grappling, and you know what people forget about my striking is I've only been training striking as long as I've been fighting, and I think I've been uh, fighting around. I just had my six year anniversary in December as a professional, so I've only been training striking seven eight years. So. Uh, 
the leap that's why I leaps and bounds uh I've progressed in my striking you know it's it's newer um and I think it's only a matter of time before I you know I start putting these guys away uh, with my striking as well and uh, we already know I got the grappling credentials uh for from a lifetime of uh grappling and you know like you said putting things together and you know kind of see how it goes and We'll uh, knock out some of these great, great names and maybe go on a legend tour here. See if uh, Aldo or Edgar wants to go next. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Goes, were you saying something? Yeah, I was going to say, let's flip it on us. If he went out and got rid of Dominic Cruz and then said, well, there you go. There's a polished performance. I know you guys like to polish off Burger King, so we should be uh, pretty, pretty good there, fellas, right? You just take it, right? <laughs> I would just take it. I would, I would, laugh. I would say, if he said that to me back because we said this, I'm okay with it. I would laugh at it. You got us. So I like when people motivate each other a little bit. And I like that you took what Dominic said. And I know you, you look at him as an analyst. He's doing his job. But I like that there's a little piece inside of you that kind of says, all right, can't wait to prove you wrong. Because those are the people that are most successful, in my opinion. Right. And, you know, uh, this is what I got into this sport for was to fight guys like Dom. You know, this is the type of fight that I wake up in the morning, you know, sit out of bed and wonder, you know, is he training? What's he doing? Um, go going to bed late at night thinking about your opponent, you know, not uh, not making it overwhelm your life. But uh, that's a good feeling. It's a feeling that uh, I've had for a long time, you know, as a kid, knowing that I'm going to be facing a certain opponent or, you know, even these fights, the last few fights, uh, you know, the wood fight, you know, got got the, the insides rolling. But guys like Dominic Cruz, you know, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So um, it's, I'm excited, man. And uh, I'm going to show you guys the best Casey Kenny. I will say this to close with with the interview. Um, I do have to give Dominic Cruz some credit because when I saw the fight booking, I remember thinking I love the matchup, but one of the things I thought of quickly was Bravo Dominic. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of veterans, especially the ones that have reached high levels like Dom has get caught up in, well, he hasn't established himself yet. He's not a name. So therefore I don't want to fight him. When in reality, I think some of them are tap dancing the youth, the hungry youth that's coming after those guys. And they know it because at one point they were that youth. So the fact that Dominic's doing it, I think it's great. And I'll tell you why, because all you athletes are really one huge fraternity. You might mess each other up for a few years, Some you may, maybe even retire disliking each other, or maybe you circle back and you guys can have beers together and go, hey, that, those were the days. But I still believe that the athletes in general are a fraternity. And what happens is the same way Dom probably got a, a shot from somebody at some point, he's returning right. the favor. So, Casey, in 10 years or so, when you're winding down, you might be caught in that same spot, you know, where somebody's going to try and make a name off you. And and um, you may choose to. You may not choose to. I don't know how the sport's going to evolve, but um, we'll see how that plays out. You know, I'm not obviously trying to tell you what to do, but in 10 years, you may be in that same position. But I thought it was dumb. I thought it was cool for Dominic to do that for you. I thought it was cool for Dr. A to fight Kevin Holland. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that, that's the only way those guys can become names is by fighting those top guys. Yeah, no, uh, you're exactly right. You know, the, the new era is in town, and the, the old era has to, you know, sign that bout agreement to step up to fight the young guys, too. And uh, like you said, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, I'll, I'll be in the same position, and uh, I can return the favor. But super grateful for, you know, Dom stepping up and uh, signing his name on that dotted line. You still got your tough enough belt, by the way. I do, I do. Oh. It's uh, it's in the closet somewhere, but I got it. Some, I got it with me. Look, I'm in no position to talk because you at least got those verticals. I have uh, nothing. Sorry, right, my walls are bare. My walls are bare. That's why I had to put the blinds. Look at those backdrop. <laughs> Goes, go big on yourself for a second. Can you? Do what? Look at him. He's got. Oh, oh he's, yeah. He's got, he's got cool the whole setup there. back there. A luchador mask, a world MMA award. Look at that old school WEC glove. And then there's a Mosvidal bobblehead. Pretty chilling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Casey, got you his, got, got, his belt. got his man cave set up. Yeah. I need to set up the belts. Uh, you know, um, hopefully, maybe after this fight, I'm going to look to buy a house. I still rent houses. Um, so I haven't, I haven't went too crazy at this house. I want to, you know, get my own place and uh, make a man cave and, Sounds like I need to throw some belts up and, you know, get my little setup going. 
We'll send, we'll have our people send your people um, an interview we did with Eddie Alvarez. He's got a pretty cool background. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a Bellator UFC champ, and he had a couple other belts, but it was pretty cool. Uh, I'd love to see you in something like that, you know, especially when you add the UFC belt one day. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for the time today, man. Go get high. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Later, man. Have a good one. <laughs>